everyone. Welcome to another Still Moments with Jesus with me, Brian Samuel Lopati, and we are so glad to have you on the show again. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, today we have a great, 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 great intro to uh, Christian Apologetics, and we will be starting with the one and the only Saint Athanasius. Now, a few things to know about Saint Athanasius. Uh, he's, a, he's otherwise known as Saint Athanasius the first or uh, St. Athanasius of, of Egypt, or also known uh, by his other name, uh, Athanasius the Great, if I'm, not wrong, if I'm not mistaken, that is one of his titles. Uh, Athanasius is known for two major, major Christian works in his uh, work of apologetics. So he had one titled Against the Heathen, and then two on the incarnation of the Word of God. Fun, fun facts about the incarnation of the Word of God. That particular writing is available publicly, and I think so is Against the Heathen. Uh, I'll try my best to make sure I put links down below so that you guys watching, all of you watching, are able to just benefit and have a you know some time just going into this work and just kind of like getting your feet wet in all things apologetics. Uh, something to also note is that Athanasius is... Um, started his work at about the age of 20 or 21. Uh, that's when he first wrote the incarnation of the Word of God. So for those of you who are wondering, hey, do I have to be a certain age to do, get into this work? No, it is not that you have to be a certain age to enter this, to get into this work. He started at the age of 21 out of sheer passion as a minister in the making. And it's important that he later on becomes a bishop uh, of Egypt and Libya in Alexandria. Uh, so North Africa is his region. So uh, something to keep in mind as well is that Athanasius focused on one particular point, and uh, this is something I think anyone who's been paying attention to and just listening in on our conversation on Christian apologetics uh, can already resonate with, is that Christian apologetics is primarily concerned with faith questions. Not necessarily intellectual questions, faith questions. And this is something that sent Athanasius, and that's why we, we felt, both Maya and I, Mayan absentia. Uh, for those of you who miss it, please send her your love. Um, but that is why we are primarily concerned with this particular point on uh, Athanasius' uh, core, you know, teaching, so to speak. So he focused primarily on the Son of God and the Son of God as the eternal word through whom God made the world. And he's the one so he focuses on Jesus as the Son of God and the Word who came into the world in human form to lead men back to a harmony from which they had fallen away. And Athanasius reacted vigorously against Arianism. I'm borrowing part of this quotation from uh, Britannica online. If you go and Google it, you'll definitely find the same quote down below under other works. And he was primarily going against Arianism because Arianism under uh, Bishop Arius uh, had proposed that the Son was a lesser being than God and was otherwise and was not equal to God and so would not be it would not be fair for one to call Jesus uh, God but uh, not God in nature but like God in nature uh, so w which is uh, comes from the Greek word homoi homoi usion versus homo usios so Homoousios would mean equal, same. Uh, homoi usios would mean like. And that's the thing, that's the, the second point is what Athanasius was, was disputing. A fun fact to know about Athanasius, by the way, as uh, we talk about him today, Athanasius was also really well known for really going into matters pertaining to what, what does the doctrine of Jesus as son of God and as God in human form really entail, right? And this is something to keep in mind when you read Athanasius's writings, because Athanasius was, was not only one of those first apolog apologists who were ministers already and became bishops, right? He also went through a period of turmoil when the church exiled him and kicked him out. You'll find this as a trend in all notable Christian churches, Christian history's uh, leadership. Oftentimes, those who early on began and are known for like amazing works on Christianity that heavily influenced how people thought and argued about Christianity, 
uh, to other religious traditions, they were often the ones who were exiled, ridiculed, kicked out. They went through a lot of persecution. We should remind you about the first video we made uh, about Christian apologetics, that it's not a, a point of intellectual uh, acumen and, and boasting, but it is a point at which we are supposed to come to understand what the faith entails, right? Uh, and the Christian faith at that. And uh, St. Athanasius is no, no uh, exception to that rule. Uh, and that's something just keep in mind, right? So it's very important for us to pay attention to what he has to say. For instance, uh, and here's a very good example. St. Athanasius is responsible for one of my favorite saints to follow throughout all of history. And he's been such an inspiration for me from the time I actually got into seminary from for me even wanting to pursue uh, biblical studies, for me wanting to learn more about the Bible and theology and understanding what is faith? What is this faith I've learned? Because for the longest time, I just relied on what the pastor had said, what my parents had said, what other leaders and other pastors around me had said. But I never dared ask the question, what does the text say for itself? And that's something uh, I wanted to keep at the back of your mind. And also, what are the ramifications of coming to understand a faith that for the most part is contingent on one of the most interesting and the most fascinating pieces in all of world religion's history. The resurrection, bodily resurrection, of a slain or murdered uh, historical figure who died a criminal's death. Now, keep in mind, there's, as Paul would say, I tend to agree with St. Paul on this when he says, if Jesus never died, if Jesus never died and rose, then Christianity should be pitied among all the world's religions. Because that means we're just talking like a whole bunch of air. But that's something St. Athanasius knows. And because of that, he... and Sorry, I've gone so much in, I've gone in circles. But this is the point I was coming to. That St. Athanasius was talking to a very well-known person that you and I know... I love, and we actually have like a little episode on him uh, in uh, in our series on the Still Moments of Jesus YouTube channel. And this person is Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony is a very good and classic example of someone who, through his actions, both he and his sister left and went into the wilderness, came from very well-to-do families, went into the wilderness, went to the deserts of uh, North Africa, decided to leave it all, right? They came from well-to-do families. They sold everything and decided to live a monastic, a very hermetic monastic lifestyle as a way of rejecting the excesses of their day. When hedonism was at its peak, when uh, orgies, uh, uh, abuse of power, alcohol, like... Uh, the corruption that came with like a lot of wealth, opulence, right? When that was the, the 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 marking signs of his day, he said, and he and his sister said, no, we're going out. We're going to go and find something else that's different and try and reconnect our relationship to God. Now, something to keep in mind with Athanasius and St. Anthony, who are both very close friends. Uh, St. Athanasius was talking about how the word became flesh so as to reconcile humanity back to God in a state of relationship and closeness and intimacy that was lost because of uh, the sin that came into the world through Adam. But on this other hand with St. Anthony, St. Anthony discussed was uh, pragmatically living out the life that exemplified what that, what that return to that relationship to God looked like in lived experience. Now, for those of you who've probably heard stories about uh, St. Athanasius and St. Anthony, I hope this blows your mind a little bit. Because on one hand, as St. As Saint Athanasius is talking about some things concerning Jesus as Son of God and Word of God and God, right? Become, you know, taken on human flesh. On the other hand, St. Anthony lives through the experience. We know, about, we know a few highlights. I'll try and highlight a few, a few things from... Um, St. Athan Athanasius' account of St. Anthony's story. St. Anthony, similar, you know, St. Anthony went into, you know, 
when he went out to the wilderness, went and lived and dwelled in a cave to start off. And during his time in the cave, he experienced a lot of uh, uh, tribulations, a lot of trial. And for the longest time, he thought that a lot of his own battles, as he is encountering and fighting his inner demons, so to speak, that that would have to do with him having to fight the battle for himself, by himself. Neglecting that Christianity is not a faith that requires you to hold on to this God, but rather this God holds on to you. And this God is eager to make that relationship with you. A very personal and very intimate and a very a very seen type of relationship. And that's the same that's the exact path that Saint um, Anthony goes on. Because on one occasion, Saint Anthony actually gets to meet Jesus, who tells him, Anthony, I have seen you try and fight off and, and deal with your own internal struggles and issues and tribulations on your own. Yet you did not call on me. You stood there and we endured your trials without calling on me. But now I will ask you, and I will tell you that I've always been here, even when you're going through them. Depend on me. And from that moment on in St. Anthony's life, and this is a point also Athanasius makes in his recording of, Ath of Anthony's uh, experience. Anthony came, came to realize that Jesus' authority is not one to be trifled with. Because Anthony gets to have experiences with different gods as well in his experience. And also other entities that are thought to be gods. And Anthony says, hey look, I have come to see that the other things, the, the gods that Rome calls gods are no gods at all. Not in the sense that they do not exist, but in the sense that they do not really have the same power that Jesus does. And so Antony is very, very bold. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Antony was not like that when he starts out his journey. But as he experiences and has his relationship with Jesus and goes through this, this uh, period in his life, he learns from a first-person perspective from his own experience that <laughs> Jesus is God. Not just that, but that Jesus has his back. And I think that's something many people forget about uh, understanding the faith and what apologetics is. And you have to understand, like this is something, this is someone who's concer who's, whose story could be said to line up more with the mystical side of Christianity, right? So what does that story have to do with like more of an intellectual kind of like approach to the you know to the story of christianity which athanasius more or less embodies but you have to remember athanasius was always interested in learning what the practical lived out ramifications were and that in and of itself should tell you a lot about the kind of person athanasius was as an apologist he did not break apart right the very meaning of being an apologist with just being sp purely intellectual. He understood to be a good apologist, you have to understand both the metaphysical, the spiritual, but you also have to understand the text. You kind of have to understand what's going on with, with theology and, and the Bible and, all, and the traditions that have been handed down as of that particular time in history. And mind you, uh, Saint Athanasius is not that far from the last of the apostles, and this and their pupils. He's uh, he's born somewhere between two hundred ninety six to two hundred ninety eight, uh, uh, A C E, O A D, uh, whichever time period you prefer uh, to be used there. I just like A D. <laughs> I feel like it's very easy to just put in one, you know, just two letters, A D. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind and. When you look at his story, he becomes the person who's known as a philosopher in some, cap in some capacity. He's known as uh, one of the key fathers of what's known as the patristic age, or otherwise known as the church fathers, the age of the church fathers, who are going to be crazy influential as to how we understand the Bible, how we understand Christianity, how we understand Trinitarianism, for instance, because Athenius is among the first to defend it. Uh, another thing to note is that he is responsible and, and, and a key figure in influencing Nicene Christianity 
uh, if you look up the Nicene Creed, that's a very important point, uh, where it will talk about the procession of the Spirit from both the Father and the Son. Otherwise, the and the Son is known as a filioque clause. Filioque from the word from the French word for fili, son, right? The same Latin, fili, son. Uh, uh, just indicating that Jesus was on an equal standing with with God the Father. So that's that's something that to, you know to keep in mind. It's part it's partly because of uh, Saint Athanasius's work. Now he is uh, a very important uh, figure also when it comes to understanding the whole doctrine of the Theotokos. So Mary as as God bearer, you know, just kind of trying to talk, uh, prove the point of like. The, de the virgin birth, and that's how we get to the Theotokos discussions, like within Eastern, um, Catholic, Orthodox, and some of the traditions of uh, Christianity. Um, and, and Mary's significance in that. Uh, he has a feast day, so he has seven Pashans in Coptic Christianity. He has uh, 2nd May in Western Christianity. 18th January is also very important uh, in Byzantine Christianity, has a feast day to him. He's venerated, as I mentioned, so the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Catholic Church, the Oriental Orthodox Churches, Assyrian Church of the East, Anglican Communion, and Lutheranism. Keep that in mind. Uh, he is a title, his title as a saint, and he's known as a saint and doctor of the church. So it's very interesting titles that he has there. Uh, he's often depicted as a bishop arguing with a pagan uh, bishop holding an open book. Remember the book? Remember the book? Uh, not just because he wrote quite a bit, but also because he would read quite a bit. Uh, he's also bishop. He's also depicted as a bishop sending over a defeated heretic. Uh, a reference, of course, to Arius, uh, who was much older than he was, by the way. So <laughs> by the time Athanasius was disputing Arius, Athanasius was quite young <laughs> compared to Arius. Something to keep in mind. Uh, he has a shrine in the Church of San Zaccaria in Venice, Italy. Now, something to keep in mind is that he is not only someone of uh, of great repute, it's also deb debated as to what he may have actually been uh, when you're talking about ethnicity, because he was familiar with Coptic and Coptic Greek. And uh, for those of you who've been following our channel for a while, you do know that I have a, I've been trying to transcribe the Coptic New Testament uh, and making it available for the public. Uh, if you'd like, please go check out our channel. Uh, not, not our channel, sorry. Go check our account over uh, on uh, Kindle. We do. I do have a, gr a Greek, sorry, not Greek, a Coptic New Testament by Brian Samuel Lopati. Uh, and the book that's out right now is Matthew. And I've tried to put in subheadings so that you can get a better understanding of the thematic f layout of Matthew uh, from both a traditional and older Christian uh, perspective and also a newer Christian perspective. For someone who's interested in the text and just really wants to understand and know a whole lot more about what's going on with the Bible. Now, something to keep in mind as well is that um, Athanasius is, 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 is not only just highly revered, there's so many statues of him like throughout Sicily. He's also, he also has a statue in Copenhagen, uh, in Denmark. Um, he is known as, uh, you know, just like a just a, an, an incredible figure. Uh, it's uh, here's a very interesting note uh, that I should leave you guys with, with leave all of you with. Uh, Francis A. M. Forbes writes that when the patriarch Alexander was on his deathbed, he called Athanasius, who fled fearing he would be constrained to be made bishop. Keep that in mind. When the bishops of the church assembled to elect the new patriarch, the whole Catholic popul population, that means the whole universal population of the church, uh, surrounded the church, holding up their hands to heaven and crying, Give us Athanasius. The bishops had nothing better. Athanasius was thus elected, as Gregory tells us. Keep in mind, he's also not someone who pursued power. He pursued uh, influence of faith. He, His whole work, his whole life was committed to the faith. Uh, and I hope that even as, you know, we've just covered like some tits of, you know, uh, some tidbits here and there, uh, that that some tidbits here and there that you get to actually appreciate and enjoy what we have to offer, uh, when it comes to just discussing the, uh, the church figures that are responsible, for our understanding of Christian apologetics, and that we also remember this that there's no delineation and no dissociation between, 
uh, mystical exploration of the faith and textual and intellectual uh, understanding of what the text entails. After all, as if we believe the word was made flesh, the mystical was married with the physical, and someone we need to follow, who says, follow me, the supernatural, the mystical, the, 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 the aloof, the very high up, the exalted, versus the very base, the thing we're very able, we're able to touch and see. And that's why John says that, the word which we saw, heard, handled, and believed. I pray that for those of us who are paying attention to this, that this would be your moment to actually experience this. So it is with that that I say, God bless, and have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll keep churning up episodes as they come, and be on the lookout. I might touch on a biblical figure just before I continue with other historical figures on the subject of Christian apologetics. Thank you, God bless, and can't wait to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.